chance of winning. It was really that bad, but even though they lost 34 to 13, Saquon Barkley looks like Adrian Peterson meets Walter Payton meets Jim Brown. <laughs> Jim Brown had a day yesterday too, but Saquon, you had a great game. How did you feel after the loss? How do I feel about my performance tonight? Doesn't, doesn't matter to me. Um, we didn't get the win, so um, to be completely honest, don't don't care as long as we get the win. I don't care if I went for however many yards or even if I went for 30 yards. Uh, we won. If we got the win, I'll be satisfied. But at the end of the day, we didn't, so none of that matters. Perfectly said by the rookie. They get the loss, but he looked good out there. Look at his stats compared to the rest of even just the team. Just the team stats. He has put this offense on his back and has carried it. He's even trying to calm down Odell on the sideline when things are going wrong. This is a young kid. And on the other hand, I mean, Beckham was pretty much a non-factor in the first half. He went to the locker room early to get that IV. Uh, and in the second half, Beckham showed a lot of emotion, as we saw on the sideline. After the game, Beckham addressed that emotion. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just trying to get myself going. Um, you know, that that's... I felt like some of those plays right after I was getting myself going was, was some of my best stuff. Um, so I was just trying to get myself fired up, um, and I did that, and it, it it helped me. You know, there was a lot of things going on that, that had me um, fired up, and it, it like I said, it, it helped me bring out the best me. It helped me bring out that energy. Um, I, I don't know a way around it, but, but to, to get myself going. We should just stop asking him about it. Mm -hmm. Don't we collectively have to stop caring about the outbursts on the sideline? We know he does it to get himself going. Yeah. He's not trying to hurt anybody. It kind of bothers me that we keep going in on it week in, week out. But yeah, I'm not, you know, a reporter, member of the media. Like yeah, I mean, if they're not million dollars, team. You might have to be accountable for some of that action. But well, what is it that's accountable for? What? I, yeah, think I, it's, it. I think it's the fact that maybe we're miswording it. Because, you know, saying it's an outburst. It's not necessarily an outburst. It's just a guy getting himself kind of in the moment. And oftentimes I've been in this situation, you guys, I think people have a misconception that if you're playing a football game, like you're always going to be very intense. Mm. Sometimes the storyline of the game can bring you down. Not getting the ball can bring you down. Running a route being wide open, your quarterback not being able to get it to your hands can bring you down. So you have to hit the reset button and say, all right, let me think of something. Let me do something that can get me riled up. Mm. Certain guys play better when they're angry. And I got to be honest, over 11 years, the guys that did that, I admire because I couldn't find that place inside of me. I always like played from a very like jovial standpoint. But mm -hmm. guys that like flipped the switch, and there are friends that I played against that I remember getting hit and they're jamming me into the ground and I'm looking into their eyes like, what's going on? And then after the play, I'll get up and be like, yo, it's me, it's Nate. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. And they're black. Yeah. They don't have any idea who they're playing against. Your friendship doesn't matter. And that's how they played well. So I don't mind it. What I do mind though is the fact that you're seeing the emotions of Odell spill over into the young guys. Like um, Sterling. Yeah, we, we joked around about it last week on the show. It's like the old infomercial PSA. PSA. And the dad says, where'd you learn that from? Yeah. Answer me. And he says, I learned it from you, Dad. <laughs> and, and that's <laughs> Sterling going off. It's him saying, well, I learned it from you, Odell. <laughs> Answer me. Eli Apple running off the field and Eli trying to say something to him. Right. Coach trying to say something to him. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know exactly what was going on in that moment, but... It's okay to do it on the sideline because Odell has did it for so long, and nobody has said, hey, Odell, do that in the locker room. Don't do it out on the field. So that's the only problem. I don't have a problem with Odell getting himself going. Yeah. It's when the young players start doing it. It's not affecting the youngest player. They got their rookie, Saquon Barkley, who crushed it. His performance, it was jaw-dropping. The stadium, I was there, Nate. It was, you were, it was yeah. live. Yeah. It, it no lit question. up. It was raining. Nobody cared at those moments when Saquon had the, hand, the ball in his hand. Mm -hmm. But did that performance last night justify the Giants drafting him at number two overall? We sort of had this discussion yeah. yesterday. Yeah. He was the best player in football to me coming into the draft. I had no doubt. I said the Giants should go get him. I even said that the Cleveland Browns should get him if they had a chance. And what we're seeing is a guy that can do everything. And I'll say this. I saw last night shades of Lydia and Thomason, shades of Barry Sanders, shades of Marshall Falk. Mm -hmm. And I know people at home are saying, Nate, take it easy. You're such a hot take. It's not a hot take. I'm telling you what I saw from a football perspective. His ability to see the hole is just like LaDainian. LaDainian had the best vision I've seen in my era of football. Barry Sanders can stop his planet's feet sideways and make jump cuts and then accelerate. Whenever he puts his feet shoulder width apart and just balances himself, he can make any move in football. And then Marshall Falk can catch out of the backfield. That's why I say those three individuals, and he is kind of like, 
but encapsulating like shades of these guys and they're, he's putting them into his game. I don't think the Giants made a mistake taking a running back second overall. I really don't. I think the Giants made a mistake being so concerned about Eli Manning's feelings throughout this process. The Kansas City Chiefs had Alex Smith, who was a much better quarterback than Eli Manning the past two seasons so in the NFL. And they said, you know what? Patrick Mahomes is the guy we really like. He's the future. Let's trade up and get Patrick Mahomes. Last year, the Saints, Drew Brees had one of the best seasons of his career, has shown no signs of, of decaying at all. The Saints openly said, we wanted Mahomes, but you know what? We didn't get him. We want to think about quarterback in the first round. We didn't get one. So what did the Saints do? They went out and they got Teddy Bridgewater, and they're grooming Taysom Hill. Mm -hmm. The Giants have done absolutely nothing to have a succession plan because it almost feels like they're worried about what the fans might say or they're worried about Eli's feelings. Well, now you're one in five, and Eli's maybe the worst quarterback starting in the league right now. Do you, and you don't have that, a, Peter, that you, they're worried about the feelings? I honestly do. I think season. they were so worried about Eli and having the possible looming thing of a Sam Darnold or well, what are we going to do with Eli then? Do mm -hmm. we do, how's it going to be clean? It wasn't clean last year with mm -hmm. Gino. This thing was botched so badly. The fact that the Giants don't have a quarterback waiting, and don't tell me Kyle Loletta, a fourth-round pick mm -hmm. out of Richmond, mm -hmm. is the next. I mean, that's not the next in line. The fact that the Giants were so concerned about Eli and his feelings and the way that Eli's legacy would be upheld, I, I can't go with that. I think the Saints, the Chiefs, countless other teams have taken quarterbacks and said, may the best man win. Mm. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't justify it. We're not going to have this conversation unless we see who their quarterback is for the Giants in the next two years. Mm -hmm. And then if you have like a Jared Goff, Todd Gurley situation <clears throat> where, you know, you have a cheap quarterback maybe next year, but it, this is not the city where you can have people wait. Wait on that to happen. Let's wait for another quarterback. They want to win now, but one in five is not how you win. One in five, run games don't win you games, right? Run, like, he's an amazing runner. He he's, putting, he's putting the team on his back. He's on pace for 107 receptions this year, but they're still one in five. You don't win behind great running back play. Quarterback's more important, and I wonder if this is a cautionary tale to the Patriots. Like, th where, what's their backup plan? What are, you know, if, if you're bringing up the emotions, all of that. Isn't that what, why they don't have a, a guy behind Brady? Why maybe Jimmy Garoppolo possibly Could isn't be. there? At least that feeds into it a little yeah, bit. I believe that 100%. What is their backup plan at some point? Because clearly the wheels fall off kind of quick. And to your point about, we'll see how this plays out, I always feel the same way about the Raiders. Okay, they traded Khalil Mack, but if they draft two Hall of Famers in the first round, it's the greatest trade of all time. 100%. Um, I believed yesterday on the show that Saquon has already justified the pick, and then last night was icing on the cake for me, because I don't think you can overdraft an MVP at any position. I think Saquon Barkley is going to be an MVP of this league. Talk I'm about it. That. MVP, the first since Adrian Peterson. I think he's that good. And we could debate this, guys, all around, and it's kind of interesting. It, it'd be nice if they had Sam Darnold on the team right now, but I think they have their best player, and they got him number two. Mm. Instead, we've all put in a long week, except for Nady took a day off. It's Friday. <laughs> Why don't we just kick back and just relax, and we love to celebrate and enjoy football. Why don't we just have a look at yeah, Saquon Barkley, like the it. future MVP. I feel you on that 100%. There was a moment in the game where he's looking around, he's saying, this is my field. This is my house. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, is that a young rookie basically saying, I run this on a team that has soon-to-be Hall of Famer Eli, has a ton of stars on defense, mm -hmm. and of course the biggest rock star, Odell Beckham. Yeah. Yeah, he's the best player. How about on what team. Buck said on the, Buck said on the, Buck and Aikman were laughing on the call. They had a conference call with Saquon. And Aikman's busting Buck's chops for sounding old because Joe Buck said to Saquon on the call, don't ever change, young man. Don't grow up and get jaded because he's so cool and he's such a gentleman and so smart. Yeah. Buck is preaching him like a father. <laughs> Don't change. So all the stuff we just saw in the black and white, and then he's like the perfect he's person ever on this. Better off. How about him in the press conference? We've got Odell banging his head against a <laughs> fan or a radiator and Saquon saying, it doesn't matter that I played well. The team lost. Like, what are we talking about? Dream he gets it. He gets it. Uh, Aikman really tough on the Giants, I saw on Twitter. I was at the game, so I didn't hear the call. Yeah, he should have been. Real, we real tough. We need somebody to roast them. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit more about those Giants uh, as the show goes on, because we are here in New York. But our eyes on Sunday are in Foxborough. It's the Chiefs and the Patriots. Patrick Mahomes hoping to keep Kansas City perfect. So for all the latest on New England, let's hand it over to my guy, Mike Giardi. Thank you, Kay. The gang back together again, and they are having a hell of a lot of fun. Rob Gronkowski, Julian Edelman playing together for the first time last Thursday night in 31 games. Tom Brady loved it. He started the game off 9 for 9, picking apart that Colts defense. They scored 38, same as they did the week prior against Miami, but it looked and felt completely different. And when you go back to having those two guys on the field together with Brady, the Patriots, obviously, they're going to throw the ball more. About 70% of the time when those two guys are on the field with Brady, yards per play go way up. 
rushing yards improve because all of a sudden lanes open up. I talked to one receiver, Philip Dorsett, and he said, look, when we go five wide, it's just fun. You see them cowering. They got to cover Gronk. They got to cover Edelman. Makes opportunities for the rest of us, Kay. And right now they're taking advantage of it. It'll be a good one on Sunday night. Thanks so much to Mike Giardi there. Gentlemen, you'd, uh, I think we would all agree this will be a high-flying, high-octane affair, an Got offensive it. clash, if you will, up in Foxytown. Fill in the blank, though. The person who will have the biggest impact on this game, the one person on the field, is who? Kareem Hunt. Okay. Last year's first game, my man went off. He had 246 total yards, three TDs versus the Patriots, and the Chiefs won that game. He's going back to the scene of the crime where he saw himself dominate one of the best teams over the last 10 years. It's kind of like guys who go to the same bar over and over. If you go there the first time, you have a good night, yeah. you're like, you know, that's my spot. Let's go back there, man. Yeah, I man, love that fish place. in a barrel. Great so, fishing hole. Exactly. So <laughs> I'm looking at Kareem Hunt and the way that you beat Tom Brady, keep Tom Brady on the sideline. I'm going with Bill Belichick. Who's going to be the person to outscheme Andy Reid? No one's been able to yet. Andy Reid has been a genius with these play calls, and Patrick Mahomes is doing wonders. But Belichick's a defensive mind. This is what he lives for. These are the games that he gets up for. Give me your greatest offense, and I will squash it. I want to see what Belichick <laughs> has in store. Oh, cool. I feel like he has got something up his sleeve as well. Oh. All right. Um, Adams mentioned this earlier in the week. I want to see the Gronk game. Uh, you, sometimes I watch LeBron throughout his career, and he gets the rebound, dribbles all the way down the floor, and just dunks on everybody. And you're always like, why don't you do that every time? <laughs> he would score 100 points. Yeah. Sometimes I see Gronk Gronk out, and I just say, why don't they do that every time? I don't care if Gronk's coming. Just throw it to him. He's that good. He's that dominant. He'll catch it. He'll yeah. catch three out of four at least. I want that game where you just say, Oh, my God, I think Gronk might be the best player in the NFL pound for pound because sometimes he shows his flashes of that. Right. That's what I want. I think they're going to feed Sony Michelle. I talked about that earlier in the show. And when you do that and that Chiefs defense, that defense then starts creeping up, you can take your shots downfield. And I think that's what's going to happen. No question. The Chiefs have given up 48 huge plays so far this season. This will be the Josh Gordon game, Ooh, in my opinion. This it. is the guy oh, who caught... Tom Brady's 500th career no, no, touchdown no, last week, his first touchdown as a New England Patriot, up against this defense in what's going to have to be a high-scoring game. I think they they hit Josh Gordon in a big way. Talk about it. I'd really <laughs> like to see <laughs> <it>. That's <laughs> what I want to see. <laughs> All right, after this, Aaron.